Hello and welcome to the third episode of the U.S. Army Field Band's Virtual Band Camp. I'm Sergeant First Class Selena Matum and we are joined today by the United States Army Field Band Woodwind Quintet. The first piece you just heard was American Folk Suite. Did you recognize any of the tunes? My favorite, Camp Town Races. Just like last episode, we're going to talk about playing along with others, but today we'll be focused on our woodwind friends. Woodwind instruments aren't all similar like the brass family. Each one has a different style of sound production. Let's meet some of our performers and see what sound production tips and exercises they have for you. Hi everyone, I'm Staff Sergeant Troy Palantonio. Practicing scales extended beyond the standard two octaves helps develop your sound through the entire range of the flute. A two octave G major scale, It leaves out the upper and lower notes of the flute. So try extending your scales up to high B flat or B natural, according to the key signature of the scale, and then going down to either D flat, C sharp, C, or even low B, and then returning back up to the starting note. In the higher register, use lots of support Direct the air up and don't pinch the middle of the embouchure. For the lower register, relax the embouchure, direct the air downward, and play comfortably. Extended scales every day will make you more skilled with the entire range of the flute for any range of music that comes your way. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Dane Clark. Many difficulties in the high register of the clarinet come from a lack of air pressure and support, which encourages biting or too much embouchure pressure. What we want to do is keep a stable embouchure and direct a fast stream of air towards the front of the mouth, which will allow the reed to respond freely. A fun exercise I like to do is to take a clarion D and flick the C-sharp G-sharp key to reveal a covered altissimo F. I keep the embouchure and fingers steady and only move the pinky, which allows me to really focus on directing that fast stream of air towards the reed, like this. If the note undertones, then you are not using enough air pressure. If the note scoops, then you are moving your tongue in embouchure, which is also not correct. After I have successfully played between these notes, I feel that my air pressure and support are warmed up, and the high register is much easier to play at any dynamic level. Keep practicing this exercise, and remember, if your air is right, you don't have to bite. Hello, I'm Sergeant First Class Erica Grimm. The key components to having a nice sound on the oboe are the reed, the embouchure, and the breath. Having handmade reeds makes all the difference. There are many reed sellers now online who make quality handmade reeds if you don't make them yourself. To form a good embouchure, we want a flat chin and a whistle-like rounding of the lips around the reed, like this. <laughs> then apply the same overall shape to the reed. It's like the strings of a purse are closing around the reed, carefully holding it in place all around the total circumference. Take a deep breath from the belly and try to maintain that good embouchure, flat chin, as you apply this to the instrument. Start with playing a nice, full octave F long tone. Think about producing a clear beginning, middle crescendo, and taper to the note. Then work your way up and down the instrument, thinking carefully about a clear sound with lots of air support. Hello, I'm Sergeant First Class Sergio Acosta. With a wind instrument like the bassoon, it is important that we find good reeds and use lots of air to create our best sound. Our air is like the fuel to a car. Without it, you won't get very far. So big breath of air. Imagine there's a ping pong ball in the center of your mouth. Imagine a drawstring around your lips, mouth on the reed, and blow lots of air. An exercise that I do to work on my sound and to make sure that I'm using lots of air is playing octaves slowly. 
It's amazing how this simple exercise targets breathing, tuning, our fingers, and our embouchure. I start on a low note and work my way up the scale using steady air with minimal changes. The goal is to minimize any hiccups in our sound. And those are some bassoon basics. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Casey Cummings. Something I've found really helpful to improve my sound and tone are some exercises from the Carmine Caruso method and lip bends. With the Caruso method, you're focusing on supporting your airstream to get a consistent sound. You keep the horn in place and breathe through your nose. Doing so means you breathe very deeply every single time. Another exercise are lip bends. You simply play a note and bend it down a half step and then back up. Don't use any buttons, just your embouchure. You'll be certain you're playing in the very center of every note by the end. Having a tuner is very important for this. Having strong sound production fundamentals on your instrument is essential for your group to sound the best it can. Putting those concepts together allows you to create a beautiful group sound. We talked about starting and stopping in the previous episode with the brass quintet. In a woodwind quintet, the flute usually gives cues because it's the most visible instrument to everyone. Watch Sergeants Clark and Palantonio start and stop the ensemble. Now that we've recapped starting and stopping, let's move on to ways to know where the tempo is while playing. Sergeant Acosta, what do you recommend? Music and movement go together like peanut butter and jelly. In a large ensemble, like a band or orchestra, there is usually a conductor. As the brass quintet mentioned in the previous episode, when performing in a small group, there usually isn't a conductor. So we depend on each other's movement, eye contact, listening to each other, and even breathing to find the beat and stay together. Because every stage and practice room has different acoustics, sometimes you might not even be able to hear each other that well making movement very important to stay together. So, what are some easy ways we can work on this? Just put on a metronome, which we should all be doing anyway, and have some fun. Try moving to the beat by yourself in practice. Many of us move without even thinking about it. Then, try moving in your small groups as individuals, and then all together. Whether it's rock, classical, or hip hop, watch some of your favorite performing groups and notice how they move to the music. It can be all out, a simple side to side, or up and down movement, or any combination that feels right. Experiment and find out what works best for you. But just remember, when standing and playing, you must always have a good power stance that makes you feel confident. Let's watch how the players move to the music, listen, and stay together as they perform Quad Labette by Arne Running. <laughs> Thank you. 
episode we talked about coming to rehearsal prepared but how do you do that let's go over some things you can do at home while practicing to be ready for the rehearsal the last piece we played was made up of a lot of famous tunes that all overlap one of those tunes was from La Scala di Seta when I first began working on this I started very slowly painfully slowly so that I could carefully execute every note like this you get the idea. Then little by little, I worked my way up one metronome click at a time, always focusing on the musical phrase that I wanted to shape. Once you've learned all of your parts, it's also important to learn what everyone else is playing so you know when to come in. Take out your pencil and mark, for example, in measure three, the flute comes in, or in measure four, you play with the bassoon. You could hear how quickly we move from tune to tune, so it's very important to know what's coming and who's playing what so that the music flows seamlessly. Lastly, I always suggest finding a recording or more than one to listen to as you scan your part. This can help you feel as if you are in the music and make each piece second nature. Did you all hear the famous flute excerpt from Peter and the Wolf in there? That one is challenging. And like Sergeant Grimm, I start by practicing it slowly with a metronome. Another technique that I like to use is playing the fast technical passages slowly and in different rhythms. Maybe you play a dotted eighth note followed by a sixteenth note rhythm. Or flip that around to a sixteenth followed by the dotted eighth. This helps your fingers get used to the pattern more quickly and adds variety to your practicing. Rhapsody in Blue is one of the most exciting pieces to play on the clarinet. That glissando at the beginning can be as quick or as drawn out as you'd like. But how do you do it? Well, I start practicing it by playing a high C and drop the pitch down as low as I can with my embouchure and tongue position while keeping my air pressure and support engaged like this. I then follow that down chromatically and see how low I can bend the pitch on each note using the same idea. Now you're ready to work on the whole thing. After the trill and upward scale, I begin the gliss on clarion D by lowering the pitch with my embouchure and tongue position and then slowly slide my fingers off the keys until I bring it back to focus on that high C. Then it's all fun and jazz for the rest of the excerpt. Blending 
playing together in a woodwind quintet is more difficult than in a brass quintet because there are so many different types of sounds. Not only are the woodwind instruments all different, but there is also a horn in the group. What is that about? Well, early orchestras had a wind section that consisted of these four woodwind instruments and horns. These non-string players wanted to get together, hang out, and play chamber music. So they formed the woodwind quintet. Composers liked writing music, including horn players, with the woodwinds because of its warm, mellow sound. It can also add a little power to the group when needed. The different sounds and timbres that a woodwind quintet creates are what makes it a unique chamber ensemble with so much versatility. But how do you make a cohesive sound? Blending deals with concepts talked about in the previous episode, such as intonation, balancing down, and matching articulations. But overall, blending is the art of listening to someone else and trying to add to the sound, not overtake it. Listen to what happens if I don't listen to my colleagues. Also, if we don't try to match the same articulation or start of the note, it can get wild pretty quickly. Something else that helps chamber groups create a cohesive sound is thinking about who is playing what part of the music. Is your part the melody or just a supporting harmonic line? Do you need to play loud and lay down the beat? or should your rhythmic pulse be more in the background? Who has the melody in this section? Hopefully you heard the melody in the oboe. Do you know who was playing the parts to fill out the harmony? Go back and listen again if you need to. That is something that every good chamber group knows, either by talking about it in rehearsal or by getting to a point where you know just by listening. A big thank you to the United States Army Field Band Woodwind Quintet for playing today. We hope you enjoyed learning some ways to practice at home and how to play together in a chamber group. Make sure to join us for our next episode where we will delve more deeply into listening and playing as accompaniment for someone else. Look for the U.S. Army Field Band on Facebook and YouTube. There you can find all of our educational content and a ton of great performance videos. We are also on Instagram and Twitter, so you can check us out on those platforms too. Visit armyfieldband.com for more information and a complete schedule of our upcoming performances. Thanks for watching, and remember that you are never done working and learning in music. So keep practicing, don't be too hard on yourself, and most importantly, have fun.